Hello, boys and girls. It's great to be with you again this week. And today we will warm up our voices and sing a hymn. And then I will share some more fun websites for you to explore. So um, let's look at hymn 420 or uh, grab a hymnal or uh, print out the hymn from the link in the video and we'll start with that after our warm-up. So let's begin with a warm-up that goes like this. <clears throat> Make sure you're puckering for the oo and you're smiling for the e. Ooh, ee, ooh, ee, ooh. All right, let's try that. Go. Good. There's so many different ways of making an oo. E or E or U or U. Make sure you're making your U like my U, okay? So that when we're singing, we match the sounds that we hear, okay? Good. Let's try this one. Same thing. create a lot of space in your mouth for the oo by dropping your jaw and then try to keep as much space as you can for the e too oo -wee, oo -wee, oo. we don't want to crunch down on the e too much try to keep that feeling of space in your mouth on the e as much as you can and do a couple more ready go Great. So <clears throat> that was a good way to begin to warm up our voices. So looking at hymn 420, when in our music God is glorified and adoration leaves no room for pride, it is as though the whole creation cried, Alleluia. So sometimes we see performers singing by themselves or with other people and they just love being watched. But that's not the way it is for us when we're praising God, because we're making people think about God and not about us. It's one of the reasons that we all dress the same, one of the reasons that we're in the back of the church instead of the front of the church. Although sometimes in some churches, choirs are in the front too. But they're directing our attention to God and not to themselves. And this is a good hymn to remind us of that. So we have one sharp, which means we're in the key of G major. I think some of you know this hymn pretty well. Right, okay, and we have a big leap up. Just by listening to those notes, can you tell me what interval that is? you said octave or eight notes, you were correct, because I played a D and another D, the D next to it. That makes it an octave. That doesn't ha happen a lot in hymns, but this hymn has an octave reach. Good. All right. So let's um, sing the first verse together after a little introduction.
verse ends on a chord that makes you want to go back to the beginning. So that chord at the end is built on the fifth note of the scale. And that makes us want to go to this chord built on the first note of the scale. How often making music we have found a new dimension in the world of sound as worship moved us to a new, more profound alleluia. So that is so true, especially those of us who study music regularly. We are amazed sometimes at the new sounds that we hear and a new piece of music. And that can make us really thankful for the music that we are singing or playing or listening to. So let's sing verse 2. Notice how I kept singing after the long notes because there wasn't any punctuation there, was it? How often making music we have found a new dimension in the world of sound break as worship moved us to a more profound hallelujah, right? We connect all of those things. All right, let's see what we might connect and not connect on verse 3. So has the church and liturgy and song and faith and love through centuries of wrong borne witness to the truth in every tongue. So our breath can come at song and wrong and tongue, can't it? You notice those rhymes aren't exactly the same, but they kind of are. Song and wrong are easy rhymes, but tongue Mm, sort of. And near rhymes are okay in poetry. We call that a near rhyme. So, verse 3. Jesus sing a psalm that night when utmost evil strove against the light. Then let us sing for whom he won the fight. Does anybody know what night we're talking about? Did not Jesus sing a psalm that night when utmost evil strove against the light? Was that the evening uh, that Jesus was in? the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples? Or was it when he was with them in the upper room when they had the Last Supper together? Well, if you said the Last Supper, you were correct, because I think that's what we're referring to here. And he won the fight by being resurrected from the dead. Verse 5, let every instrument be tuned for praise, let all rejoice who have a voice to raise, and may God give us faith to sing always, alleluia. And that's going to be an alleluia where we don't breathe right before it, because we're connecting always to alleluia. So see if you can stand up tall, take deep breaths, and think about when you're going to breathe.
add the amen at the end. Let's do that. Ready? Go. Good. All right. A really nice song to sing and good thoughts for us to think about as singers. So if you wanted to take your own shot at writing some poetry, here's some things that you might want to think about. First of all, you want to decide, well, what's this poem going to be about? Something that inspires you, something that you like a lot. Is it something that you would want to sing in church, or is it something that you might just want to read to a friend? Then you would decide how many syllables are going to be on each line. Like our hymn, it has 10 syllables on each line, and there are three lines. When in our music, God is glorified. Okay, 10 syllables. All right, and then there are three lines, each with 10 syllables. You might decide to make four lines with eight syllables on each line. And this also has a pattern of strong and weak for the syllables. When in our music, God is glorified. Okay. It might be strong, weak, strong, weak, or it might be weak, strong, weak, strong, or even other things that you might come up with. And then you would decide, is every line going to rhyme with the next line, like this one does? Glorified, cried, and cried, or... If you have four lines, is the first line going to rhyme with the second line or the third line? So those are another thing to decide first. And then am I going to write a poem that just has one stanza, which is a set of lines? Or is it going to have four or five stanzas? So, maybe starting out, we would want to make a short poem. But these are things that th poets think about when they're writing their thoughts down. And so, maybe you want to come up with a poem and write some of your thoughts down. Because poetry is a really special way of writing your thoughts down. It can be a simple and kind of corny as roses are red, or it can be really thoughtful and beautiful, like when in our music, God is glorified. So you might decide to write a poem this week and share it with me or some of your friends, and that would be great. So I've included the same websites for workbooks as I did last week. And if you want help on your workbooks, just let me know and we can set up a time to uh, work together on your workbooks. That would be a lot of fun. And then there's a new link to singing in an ensemble from the Kennedy Center. And there are lots of other topics at the Kennedy Center website too. Even music and football, TV show themes, and information about uh, dance and opera and music from all over the world. There's a lot of fun things there. So I will look forward to seeing you next time and I hope you can share this video with some friends and remember to join us Sunday for worship and um, I will uh, look forward to seeing and hearing from all of you soon. So remember, no matter where you are, God is with you and God is with me.
and all of your chorister friends. So that means with God, we are all together. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you and bye-bye.